the floorboards creaked just enough to roust Cassandra. She could see the closet door reflected in her full-length mirror, and although closed when she went to bed, it was now open. She tried to stay still. The sound of suction cups gripping the floor echoed in the tiny bedroom, and she knew it was dragging itself toward her. Then it became quiet for several moments. She felt its presence at the side of her bed. Even in the dark, it was like a shadow moving over her, and when the air turned cold, she knew that after weeks of waiting, the monster that lived in the closet had finally made it to her bed. She rolled over, sat up abruptly, gazed into its many eyes, and said, Are you planning on eating me? The closet monster stared down with at least three sets of yellow pupils, set very close together, and said, through a massive slit for a mouth, Well, yeah, that's the general idea. Then what? The monster tilted what can only be described as a head. What do you mean, then what? I mean, after I'm eaten, what happens to me? You know, biologically? Well, I... A tentacle reached across, possibly a chin. Not sure. It's a real curiosity of mine. I've watched you inch closer night after night. She reached over and turned on the lamp on her nightstand. The closet monster recoiled from the light. Tentacles covered its many eyes as it slid back toward the closet. No, please, don't go. I've waited so long for you to get this far. The monster stopped, lowered a tentacle. Why should I? It's my inquisitive nature, she said. I want to know more about you. Call it scientific curiosity. The monster moved back close to the bed. I don't know. This doesn't feel right. Can you just tell me, do you defecate? The monster laid a tentacle on the pillow. Do I what? Defecate, Cassandra repeated. You know, evacuate waste. I'm not following. Poop. Do you poop? Oh, um, well, no. You must, Cassandra countered. Everybody poops. It's basic biology. Let me show you. I really think I should get on with it and just eat you. Yes, yes, Cassandra said, reaching under her pillow and pulling out a stack of books. We'll definitely get to that, but d take a look at this. Cassandra waved him closer. A thick row of pustule welts that served as eyebrows composed a frown. Cassandra scooched over and patted the empty space next to her. The closet monster shrugged what might have been a shoulder, then hopped up on the bed. The bed frame creaked under the stress as Cassandra flipped through the books. Freud, Nietzsche, Carl Jung, Grey's Anatomy, ah, oh, here it is. She moved a picture book to the top of the pile. See, I read this when I was four, but it still applies. She held the book out to the monster. Everybody poops by Taro Gomi, the monster read. Cassandra flipped through the pages. It attests most emphatically that every living animal poops. I researched the subject thoroughly, and except for demodex mites, uh, microscopic animals distantly related to spiders, which only live two weeks. Cassandra met the monster's gaze. You do live longer than two weeks, correct? Oh, yes, much longer. The monster sort of smiled. I like the pictures. I thought you might, Cassandra said. If the hypothesis in this child's book is correct, and you live longer than a demodex might, you must poop. Well, I don't. At least, I don't think I do. She looked him up and down. Besides your mouth, which is very frightening, by the way. Thanks? Do you have any other orifices? What? Orifices. Openings in your body. The closet monster held up a tentacle displaying its tip. Does this count? The end of the tentacle split open like a Venus flytrap, needle-like teeth extending outward. Hmm. Cassandra leaned close. It's very interesting, but I surmise it's designed to acquire material, not expel it. She sat back. Curious. Well, this has been interesting, the monster said, but I'm not really supposed to engage like this. Just eat. If you don't mind. So, we must be talking about total absorption, Cassandra said, her voice raised. I mean, a complete and utter consuming of all biological material, which is then used to... To what? The monster sounded generally curious. Well, I mean, that is the question, isn't it? She turned to him. Do you... I'm sorry, I don't believe I know your name. Todd. Todd. I'm Cassandra. Pleased to meet you. Do you get any bigger after you eat? Not really. 
I've always been this size. Do you feel particularly energized after you eat someone? The closet monster seemed to consider that for a moment. It put two tentacles behind its head and leaned back on the headboard. No, no I don't. In fact, I, I'm a bit lethargic afterward. Cassandra leaned back. So, it doesn't appear that you need to eat children to support your body. Perhaps to feed your mind? My mind? Cassandra considered for a moment. When you absorb a child, do you feel their emotions? Uh, well, yes. There's lots of screaming and trying to get away, so I assume fear, terror, horror, that kind of thing. Beyond surface emotions, though, do you absorb their emotional thoughts, their sense of life? Wonder? Are you talking about memories? Perhaps, yes. Do you see them? I sometimes dream that I'm learning to ride a bike or play a video game. Once I walked on a beach with my parents, our dog ran into the water. No, wait. The monster looked down. I've actually never been to a beach. Not really. Cassandra sensed it felt uneasy, maybe even ashamed. I wonder, does it ever become too much for you? The absorbing, the constant emotional intake, I mean. What do you mean, too much? Like eating twins or something? Because I've eaten triplets once. No, no. I, I mean absorbing the feelings, the thoughts, the dreams, Cassandra said. How can you ever be sure that what you're dreaming is your dream and not just something you ate? I don't really... I mean, seriously. What about you? Me? What does Todd dream of? Half of the creature's many eyes seemed contemplative. He held up three tentacles pensively. What do I dream about? Cassandra sees the handle hidden underneath the stack of books. I never really gave it any thought, really. I mean, I just do what I do, and... She pulled the knife from its sheath and plunged the seven-inch blade deep into the top row of the monster's eyes. Cassandra sliced downward, laying the closet monster's head open. It fell from the bed, tentacles knocking the lamp off the nightstand. The closet monster spasmed on the floorboard it had recently traversed, creating loud thumps, only slightly muffled by a throw rug. After ten seconds, the thing lay still. The bedroom door flew open. Cassie, her dad said and turned on the main light. He stepped inside, making a beeline to the door but stopped suddenly, just sort of the bleeding 200-pound closet monster carcass. Are you all right? He said. Cassandra, on all fours, grinned. You were right, Dad. They are stupid. Her dad smiled. Did you remember to slice down? Cassandra sat back. I did. I'm so proud of you, honey. I can't wait to tell your mom. He beamed at her with pride, then turned back to the door. I'll go get the cleanup kit. He paused at the door. So proud, he repeated, then disappeared into the hall. Cassandra gazed down at her first kill. She wanted to grab her smartphone and take some pics, maybe even a selfie with her first slang. But that was against the code. She still had a lot to learn, but the code wasn't one of them. There was a slight vibration. She sat still, wondering if it had been her imagination. Then after a beat, she peered over at the monster's corpse. Perhaps it wasn't all the way dead. She gazed down. No movement. The vibration came again, and Cassandra distinctly felt it emanating from the other side of the bed. She rolled over and peered off the edge. A pair of tentacles, thin and dark, shot up from underneath the bed. One wrapped around Cassandra's wrist, the other her neck. A gelatinous form slid out from under the bed. One bowling ball-sized eye, yellow and bloodshot, gazed up at her. Cassandra struggled to speak. Who are you? A horrific slit of blood-colored lips parted. I'm the monster that lives under your bed. Its eye narrowed. Now tell me, what happened to my friend Todd? Fighting against the tentacle constricting her throat, Cassandra managed to whimper. Oh, poop. Everything Poops by Kevin D. Anderson. Kevin currently lives and writes speculative fiction in Southern California. His debut novel, the geeky cult zombie classic, Night of the Living Trekkies from Quirk Books, was given a starred review by Publishers Weekly, and the Washington Post listed it as one of the top five zombie novels of 2010. 
You've also heard Kevin a good bit here on the Treblecast. We like to think we've discovered him. Follow Kevin at kevindavidanderson.com.